Being asked for so many years in the business, if you still uh, held belief in the old tradition, what would you add for me? I'd say that other than uh, a nice car, a nice foot, and a good home, I'm the same fellow I was when I started making music as a kid. I grew up poor, I grew up with a sharecropper's son, and uh, money has never been one of the things I've chased in my life. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to love my wife and my four children, and my mom and my daddy. That's what Carl Perkins all about. I found that I get more happy out of one of my grandchildren sitting on my knee and a royalty check coming in. Nothing, nothing can replace pure actual love. So I guess I'm still here, baby. <laughs> and do you believe that still a place for hillbillies in two days, the present rock business, because it became too calculated? Yeah, I guess, I guess it's big enough for a little bit of everything. Uh, that don't mean I, I like it. You know, I drive a Lincoln because I like the way Lincoln drives. But I'm not going to tell a man that a, that a Mercedes Benz ain't a great car. Because it is. I'm not trying to avoid this question. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't think you has to be too loud. I think, I think the early rockabilly sun style of good old ringing rhythm and... I just, that's my impression. And it always will be, you know. I, uh, that's the kind of music I love. It was called Rockabilly, and then it jumped to another name called Rock and Roll. But rockabilly music was a four-piece band, and it was enough. I don't really think that a guitar player needs to have an amplifier taller than he is, and a whole floor full of switches to help him play that thing. I, I like to cat plugging that little ramp, plugging that guitar and pick me a song. All of the buttons. And there again, I'm, I hope I'm not sounding like I'm putting them down, because I'm not putting them down. They're doing great, and they're expanding the horizon of music, too. But I don't... I don't think, I don't think they, they have me to, a lot by uh, making the band so big and so loud. You get two or three or four guys on the stage playing guitar at the same time. Who, who are you going to listen to? And then one guy to play that guitar for it, and the other guy got it. So it sounds... It sounds confusing to me. I don't, I don't go to the big rock concert because it's too loud and, and the kids are screaming and you can't hear. So, but they sell a lot of records. So something is right. And I'm wrong. But, you know, Chet Edge is a great, great guitar player. When that man sits down on a stool, he don't push nothing. He starts pumping within three minutes, and, and you hear what they're trying to get an amplifier to do. Echo, uh, sustain, and all this stuff. If you know what to do with this instrument in your hand, 
like he did, like James Burton and Scotty Moore's big player. Uh, all that stuff that gets in the way, you don't need it. Because they can do it with that. I mean, um, in that book, you've been described as the prophet in blue space suit. You know that book? It, it's just a speedy that blue. Yeah. And what Chuck Berry plays is a slowed down country list. True, yeah. Chuck Berry writes country music. I knew he did. I knew he did when I when I first heard him. Uh, Maybelline, Maybelline, Bill Monroe could have had a last hit record with Maybelline. Yeah, I can hear it. Where is I was well, the mood of eating over the hill? Down. I mean, he was singing on that old office Saturday night. They just found that shit. And Chuck, well, Chuck told me after I met him in the early 50s, 55 and 6. I said, man, you like country music. He said, I love country music. And he'd set me back in my car and he'd sing me country songs that I'd forgotten about, man. Jimmy Rogers. He, and Chuck and Yodel and all that stuff, you know. So it was a boring, um, the black, the black barn from the white. That southern gospel spirit music, that put the beat to it. And it, uh, I really don't know what made it work. I don't, I don't think anybody does. And I don't think there was anybody that done it back in those days that ever thought it would be around as long as it had, you know? If you listen back, we listen back to those records, they're pretty, pretty simple. They wasn't, they wasn't, uh, and they were a hell of them, lower than people think they were, you know, they really were. But it was time in America, uh, in the world, for the teenagers to have their own kind of music. And they refused to let their parents tell them what kind of music they were going to like. And they, because of the way Elvis especially looked and sounded, it was a combination of several things to this for He kept the off. Because they went crazy over this. Immediately they went wild over the way Elvis looked. Nobody, nobody had hair like him. Nobody combed his hair. Nobody moved like him. Nobody acted like him. He copied nobody. But I ever knew. I never knew anybody that I could say, yeah, Elvis is trying to be like him. Mm -hmm. The world tried to be like the world. Every once in a while, there's a original human being comes on the face of the earth. And he was that. But don't you think that, for instance, Jerry Lewis, or you, you, both of you were much more black than ever was? More black? Yeah. I mean, influenced by black music or so. No, more rock sounding or so. I don't think so. I don't, I don't really think so. Here's the... Uh, when, when you say uh, black, it's that black southern gospel. We're here, yeah. we're gonna lay yeah. down my burden. Down by the hill, down, yeah. down by the hill. I mean, Elvis is very much influenced by that. Mm. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. He, he and all the rest of us, Adapted. All right, let's go back to uh, this first one.